Hello and welcome to the MBS Show's Reviews and Discussion Podcast. Um, I, I guess this is under the umbrella. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Jacob. Hello, everybody. I hope your weekend's gone better than mine and Norman's. Yeah, I mean, our weekends were rough. Yeah, our weeks were really rough. But hey, um, we, we're here. We're here right now. We are... Uh, kind of enjoying our weekend with doing things that are not frustrating us, I guess. Yeah. So, in today's show, we're going to try and do something different. Um, This is usually a Patreon exclusive where uh, we I do a series called Stay A While And Listen. And in this series is just basically me talking to you guys at home about things that tickles my fancy or stuff. And this week, or this time, I feel like talking about how we got started with Yu-Gi-Oh! and where that lead us to, well, wherever we are now. So, Jacob, um, would you like me to start or would, or would you like to start? Good to go. Alright. So, uh, if you guys got no idea what Yu-Gi-Oh! is, um, it originally started as a manga about a freakishly good uh, person who knows how to play games. Uh, he picks up a game and he automatically knows how to play it. Uh, and they call him the king of games. So, okay, that's pretty cool. But as time goes on, uh, the creator created a in-world card game called Duel Monsters, inspired by Magic the Gathering. And after that's done, it, the, the card game kind of got really popular and surpassed whatever concept that uh, the creator um, had. Uh, the creator was... Kazu Kitakahashi. Yeah. So he, mm -hmm. so, uh, he he had this whole concept, but suddenly card games became popular and he just like, okay, I will guess I'll do that now. So getting back on track um, with me, I remember buying my first structured deck and... Me not knowing how to play Yu-Gi-Oh at all, no having reference or anything like that, I just bought two structured decks, and those were the original Yu-Gi Muto and Seto Kaiba decks. And starter deck. yep, starter decks, and they were serviceable. It was it wasn't powerful, it wasn't balanced, it was just oh, it was how how would you describe those decks, man? Basic. Basic, yep. Oh yeah, they, they were basic, they were basic. So, I started with those two and kind of try to understand what the hell is this game. The rule books were almost non-existent. And mind you, this was 1999 or 2000, something like that, where the internet was not readily available so there's no youtube video on how to play there's no uh, websites to teach you how to play the game and whatnot so basically you just have to kind of look at the manga for reference so uh there's there, 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 there. so this my start uh, what about you jacob well, for me, kind of got into good, started right back uh, in the early 2000s. Basically, we didn't really have that much American television or anything else. We, most of the channels that we had on TV were German or uh, Italian, basically from our neighbors. And one of the um, on one of the German channels, well, it basically was playing. Uh, anime that was German dubbed 
mm-hmm. to um, go out the afternoon about the time when I usually got back from school. And, well, uh, one of those uh, animes that were playing during that time besides uh, you, uh, what was it, uh, Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon, well, it was Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> and, well, I sort of got uh, dragged into the whole story. And then, I don't know what year it was, but sometime in the early 2000s, when this thing was already now uh, available in Europe, I sort of stumbled upon it in my uh, local game shop. And I got so excited because I swear I had the... What do you call it? Um, When you dream about the future. Uh, oh, uh. Premonition? Yeah. Basically, mm-hmm. the, the the night before when I went to bed, I so, uh, sort of dreamt about Yu-Gi-Oh! for the first time in my... <laughs> I was really... It was really jarring when I went to the game store that I usually went every, every day after school mm-hmm. and found this. But, of course, unfortunately, then I had a job because I was the only one who watched this and there was uh-huh. nobody else to play it. So I sort of got one of my uh, friends, uh, well, I sort of dragged him into into <laughs> this to watch the anime. And at that point, we basically already had the parasites, and so they could the, download the English uh, dubbed episodes from oh, the... God, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, uh... I know where it is, but it, it is what it is. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, for me, uh, I didn't really watch the anime at all. Like, uh, we, if I, if I'm trying to remember right, uh, we didn't get the anime at all because even if I did, uh, most of the shows were kind of all over the place. So what, what got me in besides, um, buying the cards was just the manga. Uh, the manga was in my language, uh, Malay. So uh, kept up with that. Also had a friend who was into it. So we um, buy mangas, buy cards, try to play and whatnot. And we, you know, we kind of got off or, or uh, leap from there. Uh, the, the manga was something else like, oh, that that's cool and whatnot. But uh, this was the time where, oh man, things with the game were kind of starting to develop slowly but um I, i'll i'll talk about that one later so uh with me uh, buying booster packs uh having a lgs that brings them in uh just just getting it and playing it and trying to understand the game which mind you uh my cards were in japanese <laughs> so yeah good luck with that motherfucker <laughs> So yeah, um, <laughs> like I had a love hate relationship with Yu Gi Oh because the game was frustrating at points. In what way? In the fact that I, mean, I don't it's... understand the cards. <laughs> oh, that. Yep, man, it was so it was so frustrating. But I found a workaround, and the workaround wow. is. By playing the GBA version of Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Game Boy Ad- Advanced Yu-Gi-Oh! Yep. Mm-hmm. So, what uh, was that? Oh man, uh, I, I remember me saying that, oh no, um, I, I there's uh, there's no internet and whatnot. And yeah, uh, internet was kind of hard to get by. And even when you do have internet, the baseline of what you're getting is just okay uh game fq exists uh you download a gba rom you manage to download the Yu-Gi-Oh game i'm trying to remember what the game was but yeah uh you manage to get all that and okay you play the card game and it's not a full library you have to insert cheats to get all the cards and whatnot and in the end it works, I guess. Uh, let me... World Championship Tournament 2004, maybe. I'm, I, I see the pictures, but I don't see screenshots 
God damn it. Why why don't you give me screenshots game? It could be this one. Maybe. Let me double check. <laughs> uh, did you play this one? I remember playing uh, a ROM version of uh, of Game Boy Advance uh, game at some point, but I can't remember which one it was, honestly. I just remember that it was sort of sticking to the Yu-Gi-Oh! to the official card game, but it was also sort of uh, sticking into the, you know, those nonsensical rules, like the one where, uh, what what was it, the attributes that basically uh, have uh, one up or one another. Do you understand? Uh... Like... Uh, if a light monster fights a dark monster, then dark monster automatically gets destroyed to you, and if the light monster has less attack, then it... oh yeah, they not nah, that, that was dumb. Did did uh, it didn't get that that one? Like no, that was no. This was kind of uh, straight to the point, really. Uh, you move your character, you fight with the opponent, and this was the time. Uh, in game, the story was you were in the battle city arc. Uh, yeah, you... just like I don't know how many uh, games of these are like the champ world championship tournament for in two thousand four is one of them, and for the other ones, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to look for. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to look for it at the same time too. But I I remember it was a GBA uh game because if I'm not mistaken, I bought the physical game and played <laughs> played it there too. Is it GBA? Yeah, it is advanced. It wasn't GameCube. Not yes. I don't. Yeah, no. PSP. Oh. F okay. Yeah, I remember starting out with advanced, then moving on to PSP. But which one? Which of the advanced game did I play? <laughs> oh, man. But whatever it is, man. Whatever it is. Um, uh, game was cool, I think. The only other Yu-Gi-Oh! game that I remember was uh, Forbidden Memories, the one for the... PlayStation? What was it? PlayStation. Oh, oh, yeah, and Duel of the Roses. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Duel of the Roses is dumb. You're going to have to explain that because I, I'm i not a console kid. So I never oh, had any my God. All right, Duel of the Roses is your quote-unquote Yu-Gi-Oh! Your standard Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, game battle where you have your board and whatnot. But the problem is, it uh, it had <laughs> they kind of played the elemental game where uh, your board does this, your board does that, and it was it was how do I put this? You you're expecting to play Yu-Gi-Oh! But now play Yu-Gi-Oh! with something else attached to it. So it was not, f it was not fun, but it was entertaining to say the least. And at the same time, too, your uh, Yugi and the rest—they're they're still Yugi, Joey, and so on. But they're like quote unquote historical figures. So uh, it's kind of a what you call this uh, blast from the past history kind of game, but not really because your characters are fighting with car. I'm uh, sorry, with Monsters instead, like oh my god, it's just so dumb. <laughs> like it was dumb. It was it was it was dumb. Uh, so um, looking here, there's three PS2 games. Yeah, Duel Duel of the Roses. Yeah, let's throw throw that crap to the garbage because the the art's not like that. Uh, and then you got Capsule Monster Coliseum. Uh, that that's that's something else. Then you got uh Yu Gi Oh GX Tech Force Evolution. Not sure what that is, but still. Uh, boys. So uh, what else were we talking about again? Uh, let's see. So yeah, um, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, yeah, my workaround for understanding how to play the card game was just playing the GBA game and uh practicing it there and. Then meeting real life people playing the game. Also, I was wrong with some of the card effects because some of the cards they didn't. Uh, it's not translated, but they didn't uh, transfer to 
the real world game because uh, those cards are old and I got <laughs> I started getting new cards. So like screw you. <laughs> Uh, yep, love hate relationship with the cards because I can't reach this stuff. Oh god damn it. Uh boys. So what about you? How did you start learning to play the card game? I'm pretty sure there, there was actually a manual on how to play in the uh in the first started and started decks of uh, Yugi and Kai. I'm pretty sure they they were in there. They they are, they were, they were. Um, I just didn't uh read them. <laughs> it was just a bit jarring because you saw you got used to watching season one of Yu Gi Oh, and then uh, well, actually, it was a bit easier because uh, I think Battle City Tournament was starting to come out at that time, so it was a lot easier to digest the the rules are starting to become a bit more coherent what they're supposed to be but at the same time too um you, at the same time too Yu-Gi-Oh's rules for the proper card game and the anime are two separate different monsters like they're they're two separate beasts one's one to do this the other one's to do that and then like oh it's not like that oh man oh that doesn't make sense why is it not why, why it's not like that I mean like oh no okay that's yeah. not so that that I was guess, yeah. sorry go ahead yeah well, i guess when they were originally making the card rule for that one specific they sort of uh relate on how the bad the power creep was gonna become uh... so they changed for the tcg and the well the anime manga remained the same i think I mean, you can just look at the card of sanctity. This completely different uh, in the TCG compared to the anime. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, oh man, that that's that's a frustrating part, right? Like, oh man, having the card game versus the uh, and manga or anime being two different rule sets is just frustrating could you I, I don't know if you could imagine this or not but just looking at how this card works versus how the real effect works can get you in embarrassing moments like that happened to me because you couldn't read Japanese and the, those that did were basically well they did something yeah okay uh, a good example is this Um, there's a card for uh, Yugi, he used um, a magic box, something like that, or something to call the Dark Magician Girl. And, uh, oh no, the, the Dark, oh, god damn it, I forgot the card. But it was just so bad when an opponent used it. I, I thought it was something like the, uh, what you call this, anime version, and they say it wasn't like, fuck you then. Oh my god. Like, it was just frustrating. Like, Yu-Gi-Oh! was just frustrating for me. Ugh. Sorry, well... Which, I'm trying to remember which box you're referring to. Uh, let's see uh, if I can even find that stupid... Like, here's, here's another frustrating what, what thing. Is, sorry? Do, Dar sorry, Dark Magic Curtain, uh, if I'm not mistaken. On another side, you know, the web page or the wiki page for the Yu for for Yu Gi Oh wiki, it's it's kind of sep <laughs> it's kind of more focusing on the what you call this, uh, more focusing on the uh anime instead of the card game. So when you're trying to look for something, you're trying to look at least for the cards. It's not there. They they don't they don't want to show you anything about the cards. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so basically you wanted to sell Dark Magician Girl, but the rules are completely different. You can only sell a Dark Magician. Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're reading it now, you, you can see what it says at the, whatchamacallit, uh, um, in the 
I think it is in the trivia if there is. God damn it. Ah, uh, boys. Uh, and, oh my god, the, the structure deck, the, oh god. Yep. The, the structure deck here is not great at all. Like, the way to get, oh my god, I'm so frustrated right now. Start the decks, ay. And, yeah, oh wow, did, um, I'm frustrated, god damn it. Uh, okay, um, structure deck, yeah, okay, let's see if I can find, um, I, I want to give up, I, I don't want to, I don't want to look at this anymore. <laughs> so, um, what about you? Anything frustrating about you, Gio, that you kind of? Uh, remember and want to hate. <laughs> I can uh, say one. Okay, what was when it? The, when the game first came out, me and my friend fucked up because we were constantly buying tons of the first uh, bo first booster prize, the Legends of Blue Eyes White Dragon, which is kind of. Oh. Uh, okay, I'm a sucker for nostalgia. And that pack was fun to open. Yeah, but then you don't get the necessary cards that you basically acquire. Like, okay, there is something that, is, uh, that was really frustrating, in, especially in the early part of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Yu and this goes back to the Legend of Blue Eyes White, White Dragon booster pack, because some of the cards that you require for basic function of some of the lesser cards you couldn't have them because there was such high rarity like polymerization for example it's super rare but you you need to have it if you want to play like some of the fusions that are like common oh god i know what you mean poly poly is uh, polymerization being a rare at the time was Like, oh yeah i mean yeah it's one of those key key cards that uh makes you uh, okay i kind of get why they put it at uh super um super rare was it yeah where it was a full foil i, I kind of get it because it was a card where um uh, by just using two monsters and this card and those monsters doesn't need to be in the battlefield they just be in your hand and you can summon a strong monster i get it but the problem is your whole gimmick was to uh, promote the fusion stuff and setting polymerization at super rare or secret no super rare was just dumb and short printing it was also dumb like just put it at a rare and it, it probably work. No, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pack is, okay, how how did booster pack work for you back in the days? No, you went to the store and you bought it. No, what I mean is uh the pack rarity because uh over here well, um I, I bought Japanese packs, so one pack has five cards in them and uh at the back of the pack so you know uh, in a pack you you're not guaranteed to get a rare card well i'm i'm pretty sure that it was set up that at least one of the cards that were in were of some rarity yeah the, I remember. the japanese one don't give shits so you you didn't get any uh what you call this um you didn't get any uh handout so either you get a rare or you get nothing <laughs> so i remember buying packs just oh god that was those were the days man those were the days so frustrating oh now i'm getting pissed off with Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> i thought this was going to be one of those cases where oh Yu-Gi-Oh, fun 
I remember back in the days. Now I'm just pissed off. <laughs> yeah. And then there's also the initial power creep that came uh, with the game. Because you know how, like, there were some cards already that were... Uh, I don't know. I think this, uh, the, this sort of uh, messed up with the post-Japanese release because some of the cards that were like level 5 or something they had like 1500 attack mm-hmm. or something mm-hmm. but you already have monsters that were already level uh, what was it? 1800 and like that, yeah but they were level 4 so you could already send and this was especially noticeable uh, with Kaiba because he had several monsters that were like 1,800 oh, attack points. Yeah. Like, like the the, the base stru- uh, starter deck, Yugi versus Kaiba, the base starter deck, there's already a power creep. Your key, yep, your key monster, so Yugi, is a Dark Magician whose uh, attack power is 2,500 and its defense is 2,100. While Kaiba's Blue Eyes White Dragon is 3,300 and 2500 for defense. So it's like the disparity of the power level there is just messed up. Yeah, and then you have to take into account how quickly Kai was able to summon the Blue Eyes White Dragon on the field because he's got a lot of dragons and good of summoning dragons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. sort of in this uh, in this case yeah if you if you were playing uh what you call this the starter deck back in the days just with that basic uh what you call this deck you you better be playing smart with yugi because you're not gonna win games with kaiba's raw power yeah and also <laughs> Man. What cards did you have to negate? Let's see. Trap ball. Oh, yeah, that's not going to work for him. Fork is not going to work. It's going to reverse trap. That's cool. Dark holes, bro. The only thing that could counter it. Are you sure? Oh. I, I, I remember. Okay. Let me, let me see if I can find the pack. Because, okay. Uh, during my time when I was starting to buy into Yu Gi Oh! and stuff and getting more stuff there was a there was a premium pack um uh premium pack. oh yeah he had dragon capture jar uh, that was about the only <laughs> that was the only reason it existed to, to counter kaiba <laughs> good luck uh guess that can work i guess so yeah um back in the days uh they were what you would call this they were uh certain cards like um for Yugi, uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh, there's things called premium packs. Uh, they're kind of additional boosters or special boosters to um, kind of get exclusive cards. And I remember buying premium pack because, uh, well, it was focusing on Yugi. And he had a lot of uh, fun cards in them. And one of the few cards that you could put inside uh, the your deck to bump up Yugi's deck is uh, the premium pack 4 and in that pack there are 6 cards and I'll just list them down for you uh, those cards are Dark Magician Girl Dark Magician Thousand Knife Dark Magic Curtain Mystic Box and Magic Cylinder and all of these cards when you take a look at them uh, Dark Magician Girl is a mediocre card yeah. It's six. Uh, it's level six card, so that means you need to tribute one monster to pull it out, and it only gets three hundred power for every dark magician or dark magician. Uh, sorry, a magician of black chaos in the graveyard, and the chances of you getting three or at least two dark magicians in the graveyard is a bit ridiculous, and. Max power for her will be just uh, 2,900. And, and I'm not talking about Magician uh, of 
Black Chaos because Magician of Black Chaos, you need to get how would you call this? You, you need to get a um fusion of it out. So basically, uh, sorry, no, it's a ritual. Yeah, you you need to dump it, and how do you? Basically, it's no, yeah, it, it's no, no, like. I got no the idea how to do it. You, the only way it would work if you use it as a uh, for this card. Oh boy, yeah, yeah. Good luck with that one if you can manage to do it. Oi. So yeah, oh yeah. man. So what else? Uh, Dark Magician. Uh, it was using the um evil version of Dark Magician. You remember in the manga or? in the anime where there was another guy who's using a dark magician but his dark magician oh, yeah. is black and red the red yeah so uh, there's uh, that card's there too Thousand Knife is great Thousand Knife is an awesome card I think is it yeah you have a dark magician on the field and you destroy one monster <laughs> this was that was powerful back in the day nowadays like you have to say that oh yes I need a black magician on the battlefield and I need Thousand Knife to destroy a monster. Wait, what? What did you do? You negate the... What? what? <laughs> I mean, if you look at it, you already had a single monster destructions. They were just, well, you need specific conditions. Like, for sure, you have to destroy the monster that has the lowest attack and, well, that's easy to exploit if there's only one monster in the field. Mm-hmm. That is true, but but here's the thing. Um, Dark Magic Curtain. Yeah, I I remember, I remember this freaking card. God damn it! Oh boy. Okay, but here's the thing. Uh, you need thousand. Okay, you want to activate thousand knife. You need to get a black magician on the sorry dark magician onto the battlefield, right? So, yeah. uh, black. Uh, what was this? Uh, Dark Magic Curtain is a way for you to get him out without paying. Two mon uh sorry without tributing two monsters. So the card is pay half your life. Pay half your life. Special yeah. summon one dark magician from your deck, specifically from your deck. You cannot summon another monster the turn you activate this card this turn, but you can set. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. So basically, what you're gonna do is okay. I'm gonna. Pay half my life to get a dark vision in my deck out onto the battlefield. But what if you're the type of player that only has one dark magician? And that thing is in your hand or grave. You're screwed. Also, half your life? I guess the power creep is oi, oi, oi. Well, I mean, uh, it is easier than having to have three card combo in order to summon one uh, 3,000 attack point. Uh, I guess, but man, now I'm now I'm very interested in just trying out the structure deck for Yugi and playing it as it is with the knowledge I have now. Yeah. Actually, I was, my friend was sort of talking about trying to, uh, at some point, uh, try uh, to have a duo with uh, structured decks that were like 20 years ago, but, well, time sort of passed and we sort of, the cards went out the window, some of the really old ones, especially the ones that are from uh, Let's the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, well, yeah. yeah, I mean, if if this conversation that we're having right now somehow gets, I mean, some can somehow get some chatter with the um audience at home or whatever it is, we we can probably do it ourselves. Uh, there's online places to kind of build your deck and try it out, right? Well, yeah, there's Project Ignis. It's basically a program that. Runs all the up to date Yu Gi Oh cards, and you can even uh, play in certain uh, specific band lists. Yeah, I mean, that's that's technically what we're doing, right? Uh, what we want to do, but what we want to do is basically just try to play with the. Um, man, this is going to be hard for me to uh, describe because what I'm thinking is 
playing with the Japanese uh, Yugi deck volume 2. But I don't think you have that. So I, I guess we need to kind of have a middle ground of what do we do with our, what you call this, uh, decks. Like, do we volume find... Volume 2. What was it? What do you mean volume 2? Yeah, um, in... Uh, you know what? I'll just send you the deck list. Because in Japan, or in the Japanese version of the card game, uh, the Yugi structure deck, there's volume 1 and there's volume 2. And the volume 2 cards um, featured Dark Paladin. Who is kind of interesting build. Yep. Um, kind of uh, a fusion between Dark Magician and Buster Blade. Buster Blader, yes. So, yeah. Oh. Oh, the... Hold on. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't think we care that. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure there was a structure deck you did, but uh, yeah, the I'm... the English version is a bit different. But oh, you know what? You know what? If if the um people at home would like to see it, we, we can probably do it. It's not that it's not that hard. We'll just build whatever deck list that uh we both agree on and try to do it and see how it goes. And yeah, this gonna. Uh, I'm I'm sure nothing bad will happen. <laughs> Isn't there supposed to be a new version of uh, Yugi and Kappa started that they're supposed to come out at some point? I got no idea and I have <laughs> and I don't want to know. <laughs> because okay, here's the thing. Um um to be honest, I've dropped Yu-Gi-Oh like a bad habit for a long time now. Hence this discussion that we're having because uh it's it's fun to run down memory lane. And I some of you may know that I've been playing Magic the Gathering now. And Magic is its own beast. I'll, let's just say that. And I haven't been keeping up with Yu-Gi-Oh! at all. And funny enough, I've been keeping up with uh, ma sorry, Magic. And the latest thing that is coming out from there is Lord of the Rings. And that is its own headache on its own so I no no uh, and it's boy. got its own problems that's been having recently uh, I just want to I just want to go nostalgia man I just want to play um Yu-Gi-Oh with a friend who wants just to play silly stuff you want to play silly stuff man yeah sure that's what we got go for man yeah, you know what? Okay, the structure deck Yu Gi Oh 2016. Oh, show show me the deck list, man. Show, show me the deck list. I I want to see how how dumb this deck is. Oh my god! There's cards that that I, I don't think I've ever seen. Oh, this one. Oh, it's similar in color tone to what I showed you, but I'm guessing the insights were bad. Where's the deck list? Yeah. Okay. You get oh. warrior. Sorry. I no, this is the newer one. This is the good one. I remember buying this one. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, before I dropped it like a bad habit, I, I kind of got into it and bought uh this deck and a little bit more of uh singles to bump up the power and whatnot. And it, it was it was fun, it was fun. Uh Certainly pull out, uh, pull a lot of crap out of it, like uh, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Valkyrion, um, a, a lot of the Magnet stuff. Uh, the Queen Jack, <laughs> that, that that's all gone. <laughs> so you know what? Ah, this this would be fun. This would be fun. I I would like to play an English version of this deck and see how it goes. Buster played the sword. Oh, this one. Oh, they they inserted this one in here really now. No, not in the Japanese set. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm seeing where this is going, and yep, this is going to be fun. I, I can clearly tell this is going to be dumb fun. 
But of course, we have to <clears throat> remember that all of the starter decks and structure decks, well, they have this one big fatal flaw. Mm, what is it? One card. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah. oh, man, like... <sighs> yeah, when we start with the original you give you it, it seems like that's completely normal. But then there was there was this one episode in the uh, in the Battle City tournament where Yugi fought where Joe and Yugi fought against the rare hunter, uh -huh. you know, the mm -hmm. one that's in mm -hmm. the explosive deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this episode basically teaches you how important it is to have a consistent deck with multiple cards that are <laughs> of the same name. Yep, yep. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, here, here. Okay, one of the best part about Yu-Gi-Oh is that you can only have three copies of a card in a deck. Unlike Magic, where you need to have four. <laughs> so, four. the minus one. Yep, four. four. Man, don't get How me even... You for magic? Uh, your minimum. library size, uh, your library, or your deck size, uh, minimum is 60. Oh boy. Which is not bad, really. It depends on it depends on the game and the speed you're going at. Uh, if you're playing um, Commander, uh, that is a singleton format with a 100-card deck. Boy. Which is not bad, really. I mean, it sounds scary. And here's the thing. Every card inside your deck is only one copy, except for basic lands. Yeah. Wrap your head around that, because that's going to be fun. Well I guess I sort of get more uh, interested in Yu Gi Oh because it has a much faster start compared to Magic. Because I remember way, 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 way back in the day when this uh, demo CD came out for Magic the Gathering, you play a specific deck. And I realized how really slow the start of the game is when you need to put up the lands in order to even summon. No. Wait, do yeah. you need lands to summon or to attack with monsters? No, um, lands are just resources that you use to summon your... Uh, to, uh, oh. to cast spells. So, uh, 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 yeah, like I mentioned before, lands are just resources to cast spells. Uh, unlike Yu-Gi-Oh, where you just play a monster, uh, four and lower are free, five and six are one tribute, seven and higher are two tributes. Um, of course, you know that certain conditions uh, may want you to tribute three monsters to uh, summon this monster or even uh, use a certain card to get out another monster. So, yeah, there, there's pros and cons. Yeah. I guess the well, Hearthstone basically took up more after magic. But over there, you, you, it also wraps up, ramps up a mm -hmm. bit faster because you get uh, more mana um, each, turn. each turn. Yeah, so basically, uh, you're you're not mana screwed, as they say in Magic. Yeah, yeah basically. Mm -hmm. But hey, um, you know what? I feel like we got next week's project if we want to do something, and I I'm I'm excited. I'm excited for it, man. Oh, are we going to have a duel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to bring out my duel this. <laughs> okay, you want to know what? I, I say that as a joke, but I fucking own a duel this. Oh, yeah? Which one? A GX the version. One. No, GX. Oh, that was Oh man, it needed to even fit the car. Sorry, no. No, it's not even GX, it's 5Ds. Well, what did the G 5Ds look like? I forgot. Ah oh, man, let, uh, let, me sh let me see. Because uh, each duelist has different. Uh, you. Uh, let's see. Oh god. Uh, this is going to be dumb. Was it this one? No, it's not the, it's not the wrong one. It's, yeah, it's this one. Uh, let me just open image and tab. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, and then where are you? Okay, it's Discord, this one. There we go. That's the thing that I got. Oh, that's the original. Oh. Oh, it, it looks exactly the same like the one for uh, the original series. Mm -hmm. Yep, th this is what I got. And one of the few reasons to get this card is because of Starlight. Uh, uh, it's one of those trap cards. Starlight something dragon. Oh, God damn it. Dumbass. <laughs> Spend good money on that shit. <laughs> How much dare I ask? Oh man, um, if I'm not mistaken, it was five hundred ringgit. Uh, let me. You know what? I have a calculator right now. Let me see. Uh, okay, let me see the conversion rate between, um, European. Yeah, I need to add a currency for Europe because yep, Europe. Let's go. Um, uh, okay, here we go. Close this one. 500, it's about 100 euros. Oof. But here's a, yeah, but it gives you a lot of things. Uh, the dual disc, the card sleeves, uh, four exclusive, uh, quote unquote exclusive cards. And yeah, I mean, <sighs> and I, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> Boys. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dumb. So yeah, oh boy, I'm, I'm gonna end it here because going going through nostalgia link like this is really hurting me. I just gotta play card games, man. <laughs> ah, it's good. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I guess. I wish Silver was here to share in his uh in this uh, in our misery of this. We could have a three by duel. Oh god, don't no. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't facilitate those kind of gameplays, like... <sighs> I mean, you, you, it basically functions that you actually try to screw one over the other. Oh, man. Okay, uh, before we officially end, uh, have you tried any other card game besides um, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic? I, I know you talk about touching a bit of Magic, but have you uh, tried anything else? No, no, I tried cards. That's about it. Ah, uh, alright. So basically, um, for physical card games, it's just Yu-Gi-Oh! then? Yeah. It, it was the most uh, available card. Well, a apart from Magic, they were the most available cards that were they were selling. Mm, I see, I see, I see. Alright. Um, for me personally, I've tried all of them. Like, what, whatever that I can get my hands on at the LGS. Because I, I played Yu-Gi-Oh! I played a card game called Card Fight Vanguard. I played a Pokemon. I played... um, What else? Um, White Schwartz. I played... Uh, Magic. Yeah, Magic. I, I played... um, What else? Uh, Buddy Fight. I played... I, I touched a bit on Flesh and Blood. So, technically, there's seven card games that I touch and the one that kind of um stuck my interest was just uh magic somehow magic kind of pulled me in with the complexity of the card game the uh community i guess and also the uh story and lore i, I don't know but yeah Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't oh. I guess people are wondering what uh, made me fell off Yu-Gi-Oh, and I'm I'm guessing it's the. No, I'm not guessing. I'm I, I think I know. Uh, the reason why I uh, fell off Yu-Gi-Oh is because of a the ban list, uh, and b the hyper competitive nature of all Yu-Gi-Oh decks. That really uh, turned me off on the game. Totally. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly okay with the ban list because, well, not everybody can afford like the most, uh, like, I don't know, broken cars that you can get. And uh, let me just uh, tell you a little story. Like, back 
when I was younger and we, and we were playing you know the Carster and the capital actually organized the an official battle city tournament so Ooh, to speak. nice awesome yeah basically we all got about two quote unquote uh, map pieces and then we do it one another and then we quickly realized how bad things were when, well, other people, we were just like a couple of guys from the countryside. And then there's the, the city kids who have like, I don't know how much money to waste and they have so much of those broken cards. Like I remember just about everybody had about, had about three, uh, and was of the beginning and end was of the end. And they were all running chaos decks. Oh god, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, basically the way I see it, bandits are just fine in my book because well there's so many broken cards that you just can't have multiple copies of them. Uh, yeah, but but for That's me personally yeah, anyway. Yeah. But for me personally it's I was there when the ban list first started, <laughs> because I was running a uh, Yatagara Su lock deck with uh, Chaos Emperor Dragon as the uh, starting engine. So basically, what you do is you got Chaos Emperor Dragon out, you have Sun Gun, you destroy everything, and then you get Yatagara Su out, and then you just ping for damage and yeah that the, the opponent couldn't yeah. get yeah Lock. Mm -hmm. this was way back in the days uh this this was way back in the days so uh yeah i'm i'm, I'm not too salty with the ban list i think what really turned me off was just the absurd reprints what do you mean like i know reprints are great but just imagine if you bought a certain card and the card costs you about a hundred bucks or something like that. And knowing that, okay, it's a hundred bucks. Uh, that's awesome. That's cool. This will pump up my deck a bit more. Yeah, then, you get, then somebody gets a cheaper version of it. Yep. And it's even like worse. It. Yep, yep. And even worse back then, there was a policy, there was a rule where uh, promotional cards are not allowed in sanctioned tournaments. So... You bought that promotional card for a hundred bucks, and then suddenly you've been told that nope, you cannot use it. That turned me off real fast, and like you know what, screw this. I'm not even interested anymore. Honestly, don't remember <laughs> any of that happening to us on this side. Anybody this way, this. <clears throat> well, but still, uh. Digital version of the game is there. I I heard that. <laughs> um, Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, yeah, there's also those. Uh, well, you can basically download them any, anywhere at this point. Uh, Duel Links, yes. Well, yes, Duel Links, but also the first three uh, official uh, PC games. I forgot to, what the other ones. The first two were, but I know that the last one is called Joey the Passion. Oh God! Screw those games. Those, those. No, no, no. I, I know. Okay. Yeah, because you start with shoot cards, and it takes like really long and multiple uh, losses before you can actually get something good. But here's the thing. I, I understand those games are needed. Like, you, you kind of, uh, have to start somewhere, right? So yeah, I, I understand it. But at the same time, too. Those games were not representative of the finished product. And I, I think Duel Links, from what I saw, is kind of a nice, what you call this, in between to learn how to play the game, understand the game, and get frustrated with the game. So, yeah. <sighs> So am I am I missing anything? Because uh, looking here, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh has a lot of versions coming out right now. Ay, ay, ay. 
Mm. Yep. No. Nope. <clears throat> nope. Nope. So yeah, I, I'm guessing yeah, that's about it for now. Yeah, we, we did we did well. We we, we got a we, we got a few episodes in. Uh, we 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 got a length of episodes in. Uh, and then we, yeah, you know. <laughs> no man, I I I'm I'm very excited to try out that dual deck thing. All right. So anyway, let, let's. Uh, gonna... Sorry. Then uh, nothing. I'll uh, I'll say later. All right, I, I'm going to wrap things up. So, anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbshowgmail.com. Uh, you can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at show, And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, Jacob, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Yakafontorkar, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tom Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go do so, guys. And also, please uh, subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on Vonevalive.com. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. We have free support. You get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, and also myself. Like, thank you so much, guys. You are great. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I'm in Jacob. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode on MBS show. See ya. Bye bye.